welcome to News Geelong on this Wednesday evening here on our community channel 31 in Geelong and Melbourne. A festival of music in nine of Geelong's historic churches has become a most valued part of the musical, cultural and faith-centred life within the Geelong region and was held over the past weekend. In the pulsating world of Geelong sport, Geelong Football Club senior coach Mark Bomber-Thompson talks with News Geelong about the Geelong performance and their game at Skilled Stadium last Saturday. Go the Cats, a record third quarter against that power from Port Adelaide. And weather-wise, we turn to the sparkling Lani said I feel for an update on the continued warm conditions in and around Geelong. Opening tonight's News Geelong, Sacred Encounters, a new festival of music in Geelong's historic churches was celebrated over the past weekend in nine historic parishes who have given almost 1,500 years of service to the Geelong community, as Merrill Friend reports. We have the exhibition Art for the Soul. It's the Basilica of St Mary's of the Angels with the artist here, and you have Veronica Dimack. Now, this artwork is just beautiful. Can you tell us a little bit about your work, Veronica? Well, it's just God-led, I can say, you know, and, um, yeah, inspiration comes uh, by prayer, and we have to have uh, Diane and me work together, and it's just inspirational because God gives us that special lift, yes. Now, Diane, you are the uh, organiser of this uh, exhibition here, and you are the director of an organisation as well. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, we are a non-profit organisation, which... We would love to help uh, not only people in Australia, but uh, nations, you know, there is a lot of need there. So we're just praying and hoping that through this art we can minister to people, plus financially help people that are in need. And what's the name of that organisation? It's Injo International. Right. And that you don't have a, a shop front for that at this stage? No, actually at the moment we are based in Melbourne, in Escotwal. It's just a little boutique gallery by appointment, but we are looking to get a gallery there running and yes, yes. Right. Well, we wish you the best with the exhibition and, and with your work in the future. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Meryl. The role of Victoria Police in liquor licensing requires consideration of the suitability of applicants, enforcement of liquor laws, ongoing monitoring of licensed premises through designated licensing inspectors, and taking part in local liquor licensing forums. Erin Pearson reports. After 40 years in the police force, Inspector Barry Malik retired early this year, leaving enormous boots to fill. Taking on the liquor licensing role, Inspector Carl Pearce has now spent three months in the top job and talks to News Geelong about the trials and tribulations associated with his role. Inspector Pearce, how is everything going with the job change? Uh, look, the, uh, I've been in the position uh, approximately one month now. I came here on the 1st of March. It's, uh, it's a unique job and uh, throwing up some challenges to me. Fantastic. And where have you come from before taking on this new role? Uh, I've been down Geelong approximately 16 months. Prior to that, I was actually based in Melbourne for most of my career. So. Um, I so I've been down here 16 months. I was over at Geelong headquarters. I had a uh, portfolio role, basically doing continuous improvement and an auditing function and risk management function across the region. And how did you get into the liquor side of things and the nightlife role? Well, I must admit, I uh, hint hunted the job. Um, I knew the uh, my predecessor, uh, Inspector Barry Malik, was due for retirement, so. Uh, I did made some inquiries and put my hand up and luckily I got selected for the position. And what are some of the things people can expect to see you involved in in the community? Uh, from a community perspective, um, look, uh, I must admit I'm still on a bit of a steep learning curve at the moment so I'm getting my head around all the issues. But one of those issues is I'm trying to uh, expand our liquor records and just to explain the liquor records, there are a number of liquor records uh, occurring across the uh, division and one of those involves the high risk venues such as um, Lammies, your Eurekas, your home house, uh, where we um, have meetings, uh, agreements with those uh, venue opera operators and we discuss many of the issues in relation to liquor licensing and what I hope to do is expand that across um, Greater Geelong. Erin Pearson, News Geelong. Thank you very much Erin. The City of Greater Geelong played an important role in supporting the Sacred Encounters, 
Festival of Music under the artistic direction of Mr Frank De Rosso. Meryl Friend was able to speak with two of the performers for News Geelong. The Festival of Music has been on all weekend at the historic churches in Geelong. It opened with a concert on Friday night here at the Basilica of St Mary's of the Angels and there are ten concerts over Saturday and Sunday at a variety of different churches. St Mary's also uh, hosted a floral mosaic and art exhibition as well. I'm joined with Bruno Sakita, trumpeter, and Rhys Boak, who's organist, and you're performing the first concert today on Saturday at St Mary's. How's it all been going? Yeah, it's been lovely. It's been a lovely church to work in. The acoustic's quite pleasant. It's not too boomy, so I'm enjoying it quite a bit. And Rhys is playing quite well as well, so it's good. <laughs> now, uh, you are a Geelong boy. You were born in Geelong, and I believe your parents were married here. Yeah, they were married here um, a while ago, shall we say. <laughs> quite a bit before me, so... Yeah. And you've not performed in St Mary's Basilica before? No, it's my, my first visit to the Basilica. It's a lovely church and I'm very impressed with it. And it's a lovely organ to play as well. And so uh, your background, gentlemen, in your music uh, training and careers, could you tell us a little bit about that? All right, uh, well, I started um, at Geelong College learning from Harry Hood and then went to Victorian College of the Arts and played in orchestras I don't know, overseas and here and that's basically what I've been doing and I'm teaching in Melbourne now quite a bit as well. Great. And what about yourself, Reese? Well, I started off learning the piano from my mother as a small boy and I, I took a, a love to the organ from a record that I heard and from then I've been a professional organist since about the age of eight. So uh, it keeps me busy and it's taken me all around the world, which is a, an interesting calling, but one that's very fun and very rewarding. Wonderful. And you often play together quite regularly up at St Michael's Uniting as well? Yes, at least once a month we have, we have brass visiting and Bruno's always my first call for a trumpet player because he's so, so good. At St Mary's Basilica of the Angels, Meryl Friend, News Geelong. Thank you, Meryl. Another first for Geelong, another first for Victoria. The Newtown and Chewell Football Club has broken new ground in Victorian country football courtesy of a New South Wales rugby club, as Andrea Cosa reports. Thanks, Graham. From on the motorised stretcher at the Newtown and Chilwell Netball and Football Club rooms, I'll be chatting to Ian Spaulding. Ian, if you could just tell us where the motorised stretcher came from? Certainly. We, uh, we purchased this one from a Sydney Leagues club. So we've been watching out for uh, this type of item for a while and it popped up and we decided we'd uh, purchase it from Sydney. Fantastic. So whose idea was it? Well, a group of us got together and decided that uh, we'd like to create a bit of a first for football uh, in Geelong, at, in GFL. And we've seen them at the MCG, so we thought we're up to that speed now. We might as well get on board and uh, go a bit further. So as it is a first for local football, will it be used in away games? No, we haven't uh, organised a trailer yet to take it away, but we'll be using it for every home match. A first for local footy from inside a motorised stretcher, Andrea Cosa for News Geelong. Thank you, Andrea. You're with News Geelong on this Wednesday evening as we go to a break and return with more after this. <laughs> 